Um, well, from Compton's age point of view, I think we've been wanting to do something with the folk art collection for a long time because it is one of the most popular collections that we have. Um, and we did want to sort of mix it up a bit. And so Paul's proposal to us, which essentially asks 20 contemporary artists to choose one object and move it around the other collections, seemed like a brilliant way of engaging with it. Um, yeah, I suppose I didn't really know what you were looking for, Compton mm. Verney, when I put the proposal in. Um, I was here taking work down from a show about the artist studio, which had my sketchbooks in, and I had some spare time, and I spent that in the folk collection. And I, I thought it was interesting that a decision had been made overall about what, what would be best for that collection in terms of what it meant. Um, and I think that worked for the whole collection, but there were certain pieces that I felt suffered in that hang. So I suppose my proposal came out of trying to think about how they might be rescued in some way. It's also about the hierarchies of, I mean, folk art asks lots of questions about hierarchies within mm. fine art and, and what we think objects are in terms of their value. And I suppose there's also that hierarchy between the artist and the curator and the museum. So by blurring those boundaries and inviting curators to also do the same work as the artists that we were asking to choose the object and reposition it, um, I think that mm. helps just soften those divisions a bit and think about what people, mm. what roles they're taking on. And I think the thing about individual artists bringing individual artists was to avoid another blanket decision being made. So rather than me saying, let's do this with them all, or um, getting a, a curator or an artist in to do that, to get artists to choose one thing each, one object each, and find a way of positioning that that they found interesting. Mm -hmm. So that was mm -hmm. what drove the proposal. is it the object lead the way rather than trying to think help how do we actually contextualize this sort of picking them off individually has mm. meant that you've opened quite a lot of doors in some ways that is quite daunting because i think the next stage for us here is to think right okay so we've opened all these doors where do we go now with the collection so it's, it's posed an even bigger question for us have you found any uh, similarities between the way that curators approach it and how artists approach it or yeah are curators looking at how things would be displayed and artists are looking mm, at that's a good question um, a different approach yeah what would you say it's well okay. I think in terms of the theorists say like James Ayres it came out yeah. that he actually had been an artist and stopped considering himself one at some point so there was there's that crossover but also some of the artists I think used the opportunity to create a piece of their own work. So Mike Nelson mm -hmm. said after he, he'd chosen that he felt he had created a piece of his work, whereas I think a lot of the artists didn't, and they, they approached it more as a, a curatorial mm -hmm. project. Um, so I would say there's a, a sort of gradation. I wouldn't say there's definitely the, mm -hmm. the curatorial camp and the artist camp. Uh, there's no, no crossover. They, they, they blend in, really. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, okay, well I, I um, chose this object first of all as, as a sort of example when I was putting the proposal together. I thought if it, it would make more sense if I gave an example of the kind of thing I was thinking artists might do. So I chose this whirly gig to solve the beef feet at that point, um, to go downstairs with St. John of Nepalok. Um, and it was a completely visual link for me. But, um, the arms out quite like the crucifix on St. John's star. Um, and I did think that that will serve as an example, then I'll come back and spend more time and choose something properly. And actually, this just became more rich the more I thought about it. So I've stayed with it. Um, I think it was the idea of sacrifice, the soldier and sacrifice, and uh, the religious sense of sacrifice. 
I suppose that comparison was what intrigued me. Um, and then on a visual level, I was just very intrigued by the way the phase was made, which on here you hardly notice, but um, it's a very expressive little face with the two screws for the eyes. And there's something about that that intrigued me in a similar way to the way the cape is carved on the St. John. It's a very um, involved way of carving it that somehow reminds me of the way that's been carved. So that's my choice.